Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Johnny. Today's the seventh in a series we're doing about gotchas when working with paginated reports. Except today, there are no gotchas. Instead, what we'll be doing today is taking the report we've been working on so far, making it more presentable and ready to share with end users. So, as usual, if you haven't been following the series so far, I'll stick a link for you here. And if needs be, you can follow the steps to catch up to building the report we've got today which is this pretty ugly report. So let's make some edits to it. The first thing I want to do is give some attention to the report header. Now I'm an absolute sucker for some corporate branding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a logo here. So first off, I'm going to shorten this title, create myself a little bit of room. I'm going to go up to the ribbon. Select insert, select image. And then I draw onto the report where I want my image to appear. So let's have it in this top corner. That will automatically launch this image properties window. Select import to choose our image. My image is a PNG. Okay, and there we go. Next, I want to add some more details in my header. When you're viewing a paginated report in a web browser, you can see at the top of the page which parameters have been selected. But imagine if someone were to print off the report, which is a common use case with paginated reports. The information as to which parameters have been selected would be lost. So what we can do is add some expressions into that header so our users know what information is contained in the report. In my header, I'm gonna right click, Insert text box. And let's line this up in the left of our report. And if I right click it and select expression, it launches this expression window. Let's give this a prefix so my users know which parameter I'm describing. And then if I navigate to this category window, I can select parameters. And over on the right hand side, double click the parameter name I want to include. Now, annoyingly, the default font for that text box is Arial, whereas the default font in every other part of my report is Sego UI. So I'm just going to come across here to the font property and change that. And I like that text box to span the full width of my report. So I'm going to repeat that so that I can display the dates that have been selected as well. I'm just going to make the header a little bit bigger first, give ourselves a little bit of room. Let's copy that and paste it. And right click to go to the expression and what I'm also going to do here is add a format wrapper around the dates to make sure the dates are displayed in, in the format that I prefer Having shown my header a bit of love, now I'm going to do the same for my footer. So in the bottom right hand corner of my report, this execution time placeholder is included by default. But I'm going to change it up a bit to make it more descriptive. Select it, right click expression. And again, let's make that my preferred date format. I'm 
I'm going to make that box a bit wider to make sure that my expression fits. And the last thing I'm going to do, again, thinking about people that might want to print this report out, is let them know which page they're on. So I'm going to add an expression that will show which page this is and also what the total pages are. So again, right click, insert text box. Wind up over here. Right click, go to expression. So again, there are built in fields to allow me to display this. If I click on built in fields and get page number. I can also get total pages. So let's check out how that looks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to print layout so that we can see a full page. Okay, so I'm happy with those headers and footers. the actual body of the report is still pretty minging. Some of these columns aren't wide enough so the data gets all bunched up and some of them are perhaps a little bit too wide. So let's give that a clean up. What I'm going to do is use up this white space over here make sure that I use all the space that's available for me on the report canvas. I can change some of these column header names so they take up a bit less space. I can then adjust some of the column widths. And I'm also going to knock down the font size by one point as well. There we go, that's much better. I'm still not done though. I'm going to take you through the steps I use whenever I format a table in Report Builder. Now, some of these steps are personal preference, and some of them are actually based on research in terms of how people best absorb data when they're reading from tables. And a lot of this is based on a blog series by a guy called Kuz van Streen. He wrote the series way back in 2015 when Power BI was still new and SSRS was even uglier than the version you get to use today. I'll put a link to that blog in the description. The first thing that I do is to remove all my borders. Then I'm going to add a border to just the bottom of my column headers. So let's select that row, come across to my border properties. The bottom, select solid. I'm going to set my border width to 1.5. I'm going to add a splash of color. So that purple is the main color from my Grayskull Analytics color palette. I'm going to do the same with my column footers, but this time I'm going to add the border just to the top. Next thing I'm going to do is to adjust the text alignment. So I'm going to select all my cells. I'm 
and I'm going to make all of that text vertically center aligned. So what that does is to create just a little bit more white space around the values and make them easy to read. Now one practice I've adopted when displaying data in a table is to group different data types together. So I always aim to put my descriptive dimensional attributes first in the table, then my dates, then my numeric measures. I've done that already with this report, but another good way to differentiate those data types is with their alignment. Now you may notice in Report Builder, it does that automatically with the data that's in the table itself. So we can already see here that our product name and store name are left aligned and the numeric values are right aligned as well but it doesn't do it by default with the column headers. So let's change that. So first of all, let's make sure that these two columns are both left aligned and the dates and all of the numeric values are right aligned. Another technique I like to use, I call visual funneling. So what that does is it draws your user's attention to the parts of data that are most important. It's the information in the body of the report that's most significant. So I'm going to leave that in a black font. But for my column headers and for all the information displayed in my header and footer, I'm going to soften that to a shade of grey. For my grand total row, I'm going to make that semi bold. And I'm also going to add a grand total description. My final step is to make the rows in my table have a banded effect, making it easier to distinguish between rows. To do that, I need to select the details row and then over in the properties pane, I'm going to come to background color. Now, if I select that, I can actually enter an expression. That launches this expression pane. And the expression I want is as follows. So this mod function divides a number by a specified value and returns the remainder. So this is looking for the row number divided by two to the nearest whole number and returns whatever the remainder is. So in this example, if you can imagine the row number is an even number, dividing it by two means there's no remainder. If it's an odd number, you'll have a remainder of one. So ultimately this is saying, if the row number is an even number, set the color to nothing. And if it's an odd number, set it to a light shade of gray. And now let's check out the finished result. And there we are. The finished report we can be proud of looks polished and is ready to share with our end users. This is the last in this series about gotchas with paginate reports. Hopefully it's been useful as an introduction to people who haven't used the report builder before. We have still really only scratched the surface. There are still many more features and properties within report builder that you can learn about. As always, if you do have any comments or feedback, please don't hesitate to use that comment section below. If you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow along for more content about Power BI, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.